Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here to record a wrap up of the last few things that I read in the month of October. I ended up reading a lot of graphic novels that I had had on my TBR cart for a while. Also just a couple middle grades, a couple adult books, and I don't have very much time to film this video so I'm really gonna try to be as succinct as possible, which we all know is a trouble of mine. So the first book that I want to talk about, I think I'll put together all of the adult books that I read. The first one is Luster and this was one that I was really looking forward to as I continue to read from younger authors. The main character, she is just a really sad and lonely person who is trying to find herself and she's doing a lot of things to sabotage herself and some of them are really hard to root for or understand but I think she's still really broken inside and just trying to grow from that. What's most interesting here is the relationships between the women characters. So you have Edie who is having a relationship with a married man and then Edie's relationship with that married man's wife and also Edie's relationship with that married man's adopted daughter and I thought that the ways that the women were portrayed in this book were really really interesting. The man in this book is like horrible and um, hard to read from his perspective or his actions but definitely I enjoyed reading especially about the adopted daughter and how Edie and that adopted daughter connected. There are a lot of aha nuggets in here as well. Um, there's parts where she talks about like neo-nazis. I really enjoyed those aspects too of seeing our world portrayed through the point of view of Edie and how she is taking all of the things that are happening in this world in. So overall I did enjoy this book and I gave it four stars. One other thing about Luster is that it was a lot more verbose and like the, the way that it was written was a lot more detailed than some of the other books that I've read in this category that feel a little bit more off the cuff. It was nothing that detracted from myself, but I know that some reviews that I've read have kind of not liked the writing style and how bloated at times or verbose it feels to them. The other adult fiction book that I finished was uh, Emma Straub's All Adults Here, and I gotta say I was kind of not that into this book. I think I'm gonna end up giving it three stars. I just finished it today. I think my main takeaway of this is that I like the setup of it. I like the idea of multi-generational perspectives. I like the idea of like a, a grown-up mother with her grown-up children and then their children and them all being portrayed in the small town. I like the setting. It feels very lighthearted. The writing feels sweet. It doesn't feel like this is a sad book. Although the topics that are dealt with in here are pretty heavy. I think at the end of the day I just felt like there was no um, climb to some sort of like big reveal. There's like little aspects where you feel like things will be explained and people will have conversations um, and they do end up happening but the, when they happen they don't feel like they change the way that I feel about them or or this book in general. This book was way too long. There's a lot of redundancies in here and a lot of just like small town living. I also just really disliked a lot of the decisions that were made here and how long it took for people to realize that these decisions that they are making are not great um, and to apologize for some of these things as well. It just took too long to get there and by like page 260 I was kind of like all right get on with it. The adults here are definitely like I, I understand that that's the point it's like we're always growing we don't reach a certain age and become adults but I also feel like just the dissonance between the adults and the children in this book was like really palpable and made me kind of uncomfortable the way that the children act so mature and adultish and the adults are kind of the opposite. This didn't really change anything for me. Um, it didn't really make me think any new way. And the issues that are dealt with in here, um, some people really dislike how many issues are dealt with in here. I didn't really have any problems with that, but I could see that as well. Um, if you don't want, you know, a bajillion heavy topics, 2020 topics being discussed, um, I kind of wouldn't recommend this book. I think I will end up giving it three stars just because it was enjoyable for what it was and finally I read an Emma Straw book but I am not like racing to pick up the next one. And then the last adult book that I read was Minor Feelings by Kathy Park Hong and this is a non-fiction book of essays. It's about mostly Kathy Park Hong's experience as an Asian American, as an Asian American um, poet. There are some essays in here that are really powerful and really beautiful and then there are other essays in here that are just so meandering and kind of lose the point because we stop being in the personal and the memoir aspect and we start discussing kind of like literary and cultural situations that really lost me. There was a lot more cultural and literary criticism in here than I really expected and a lot of it was not any touchstones of culture that 
I know about or like I'm well versed about so that when I read an essay about it, it makes sense to me or it impacts me. So definitely the best parts in this, the best essays are the ones that are more focused on the the personal and I would say like the first four essays felt that way and then the second half of the book did not really feel that way. I didn't think that this delivered everything that I anticipated from it and expected of it and I gave it three stars. Let's see, now let's talk about the three middle grade books that I read and then the rest that I read after that were all graphic novels. So the um, three middle grades, the first one that I finished out of those three was A Home for Goddesses and Dogs by Leslie Connor. This is me trying to get back into Leslie Connor. I've read her other book The Truth As Told by Mason Buttle and had a lot of troubles with that book and and so I decided I'm going to read this one and see if this is an author for me and maybe that just was not a good book for me. I think I'm leaning towards I don't think Leslie Connor is an author for me. I ended up giving this book three and a half stars just because it was a very sweet book and a really uplifting book where all of the characters are trying their best and I really had a good time reading that. It lifted my spirits in that way and also the small town feel. There's another small town in this one that I, I really enjoyed reading about these really nice small town people. When this girl moves to this place she's really welcomed with open arms and I just thought that that was an interesting way to depict that experience because usually it's the new kid is ostracized and bullied. I also really love the aspects of this about animals. There was a lot of rescuing animals and saving animals and that was also very sweet. I think where I ended up with this book and what didn't work for me as much is the fact that there were so many felt like extraneous plot points that were kind of just there. This is a almost 400 page middle grade book which is very uncommon and I feel like a lot of those things could have been cut. I did love also kind of like the found family here. The main character ends up with her aunt and her aunt's wife and also their live-in landlord who's like an old man. The dynamics between them in this house as well as these two dogs that are in this house, it just felt like a really nice family to read about so I like that aspect of it too. Overall three and a half stars and I liked it more than the truth as told by Mason Buttle for sure. The second one that I read was one that I was really anticipating and that's the follow-up to Front Desk by Kelly Yang. This is Three Keys and this continues the story of Mia Tang and her family in the motel that they are running in 1994. A lot of the stuff that happens here is very historical. She takes a real election cycle and a real bill that was being passed um, that was going to hurt immigrants and she really takes that and runs with it with these uh, fictional characters. One thing about this book is that the thing that drew me into Front Desk and why I liked it, I liked it so much and why I continue to recommend it to kids is because of the voice of Mia Tang and how much I enjoyed learning about Mia and in this book I feel like Mia takes a back seat to her friends Jason and Lupe who I feel like have very interesting stories but I feel like could have had their stories be told still with Mia having a bigger plot that we are following for her and I think that's where I end with this is that especially Lupe's story didn't ring to me as much as Mia's story did in Front Desk. Definitely friendship that I believe in. I love the adults in this book too and their friendships with each other. Just in general how a community it feels like stands up for themselves here. I did end up giving this four stars so there were lots of aspects of this that I really really enjoyed. And then the last middle grade book that I read I don't have with me. It's Beezus and Ramona. This is the first time that I've actually ever read this book. It's the first book in the Ramona Quimby series and I really really enjoyed my time with it. It felt very believable this relationship between these two sisters. I especially love the perspectives from Beeses because it seemed like something that I feel like even I, I would act like that, um, being the oldest kid in my family. The ways that the, the adults, the um, other kids in the story, and just the little things that the sisters get up to and the reactions from Beeses and Ramona were just really heartwarming and made me smile. I listened to this on audiobook and Stalker Channing does the narration and she was awesome as well. So I definitely would recommend this and I do want to read the next one in the series. I really only have like six minutes to get through all of these graphic novels so I'm gonna go quickly. So the first one is Trespassers. This is by Brina Bard and this book is a mystery. Overall I thought that the mystery wasn't that great. They basically go camping and stay at their cottage and they're trying to figure out 
what happened to this couple that used to live nearby and they haven't been heard from since and there's a lot of in here about creative writing the main character likes to write and read and she starts coming up with ideas of what could have happened to this couple i enjoyed the illustrations a lot and i enjoyed kind of where the story ended up but i didn't think that the mystery or the plot were that impressive and i ended up giving this three stars i also read class act by jerry craft and i really really enjoyed this i ended up giving this one four stars and this book i love so much because because of how funny it is. I chuckled under my breath a lot reading this book. There are just a lot of references in this book and a lot of like subdued humor that he puts in that's so ridiculous that it's funny. I love the way that Jerry Craft depicts adults in this school and they feel <laughs> so realistic. Kind of speak to his main point of what the experience is of Jordan and his friend Drew in this school. So I really really enjoyed that. I also love just how every chapter is an ode to a graphic novel series or author so like here's an example so every chapter is kind of like a call to that and I feel like graphic novel readers especially kids who read a lot of graphic novel series would really find that awesome like this is from this was our pact and I love how Jerry Craft talks about his fellow graphic novelists. He seems like he's such a cheerleader for this community and I also really love that about this series. If you haven't read this and it's on your TBR, I really do recommend it. I enjoyed it just as much as I enjoyed New Kid. I also really liked Secret Coders by Jean Luang Yang and Mike Holmes. This is another mystery, but this one has a lot to do with coding, which I've never read about in a graphic novel or really in a book, period. This really surprised me how much the reveals from the mystery were captivating. It made me gasp and I was just like, oh my god, what is happening here? There's definitely a cliffhanger that makes you want to pick up the next book. And I love the activities here. The narrator has a way of like asking the reader questions about coding, waiting until the reader thinks through the coding activity and then comes back to it and I definitely did it as well I would try to figure out the coding activities and when I got them right I got really excited it made coding seem really fun so this is definitely a contender for one that I want to read with my graphic novel book club for next year I think we might read it in February really surprising and a book that I've seen so much at the library and I just hadn't picked up and now I'm really really glad that I did. And last but not least I want to talk about Twins by Varian Johnson and Shannon Wright. Varian Johnson is an author that I really enjoy and this is his first graphic novel. He is writing and Shannon Wright is illustrating. I thought that the illustrations in this book were lovely. I think the attention to detail is what's most impressive. If you look at all of the panels and what's going on in the background of the panels, just like the set work and how the scenes look, the illustrator really puts so much time into creating personality through what was going on in the background and how the rooms are decorated, the schools are decorated. It was something that I really noticed and sometimes when I look through graphic novels those things don't really call out to me but it really did in this book. We are following two twins as you can see and they're kind of drifting apart and they've always been best friends. As they enter middle school they are starting to drift apart a little bit. There's an election in here as well that I think is interesting in the way that it is completed and done. There's also a lot of plot in here about about friendship and how friendships change over time as well as families and sometimes how families try to do best by keeping some things from their children and how that's not really right. Another one that was actually really really funny I think I love how Varian Johnson writes kids and I feel like they are kids that I, I hear out loud when I'm outside or at the library. The reactions and the interactions between the kids feel very real so I really enjoyed that as well. And that is it for all the books that I read towards the end of October. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. If you've read any of these or would like to read any of these let me know in the comments and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye!